Okay, joining us now is Danica Patrick, and uh, she's going to have double duty here this weekend at Charlotte Motor Speedway. But she'll be uh, she'll be driving in that Coca Cola 600 Sunday afternoon, start Sunday afternoon, and go into the evening. But uh, she drives a number 10 GoDaddy.com Chevrolet. Danica, talk about uh, talk about your thoughts as you as you make your debut and and uh, that 600 miler. Well, I don't really know what to think yet, <laughs> um, but I got a. I think I feel like I got a good a good distance preview with Darlington being 500 and um, what's another hundred after that, right? <laughs> um, so I'm excited. I, I I'm fortunate to have the opportunity to race in both of them um, because of GoDaddy and because of Stuart Haas willing to um, put me in these 10 races this year. So. Um, so I'm in a very fortunate situation, and uh, mind you, I'll be quite busy today. I believe there's like 10 minutes between each session today that I'm running in, so um, I'll be running back and forth, but it's nothing other drivers haven't done before. All right, we'll take some questions now for Danica. Start here with Kenny, and we'll go back here to Genevieve, and then to Bob. Go ahead. State your name, affiliation, try to limit it to one question, please. Danica, uh, Kenny Beck, WXII, NBC, in the Piedmont Triad. Uh, this is your North Carolina NASCAR debut. I'd be curious to know where these starts, and specifically the Coke 600, rank for you in your career. And how many fans, and particularly female fans, do you think will be coming out this weekend specifically to watch you? Okay, first question was about racing here in Charlotte for the first time. I did come here in 2010 in the Nationwide Series, um, so I have been here once before, but obviously not on not on Memorial Day weekend, as I've been rather uh, busy in another state um, for the last seven years. So um, I'm excited to see the festivities, and actually, as I look out the window there, there's a massive American flag. So um, you know, I'm excited to see to see the sights and and see the fans and. You know, driving in last night, I saw the sea of campers, and it's it's a nice feeling as a driver. You you know, you, I love to be a part of events that are that are a big deal and that people watch and follow. <laughs> so um, so that's kind of and, and obviously experiencing the race weekend. But I have to say that just because it's a big weekend from a from a um, spectator standpoint, it doesn't necessarily mean that the racing changes. So for more th more than anything, it's about the atmosphere and how that makes you feel and the energy that that gives you. And the other part of your question was about women coming out to the track. Um, I, I don't. I don't know. I don't. You know. I don't think about that. I don't think about who is going to be here different than normal. I. You know. I think that um, I, the only thing that I think is really nice is when I, I see families, um, <coughs> families uh, coming out to the track because their their little girls or their kids have someone that they like to cheer for. If that's me, then. You know, then then that gives them a good family outing, and that's a good way to spend time together as a family. I, I know that that's that's why I started racing was because um, it was a way for my mom and dad, my sister and I, to do things together as a family on the weekends, and and that's how it started for us. So I think it's great um, whenever you can do things together as a family. So, um, but but outside of that, uh, I'm just hoping that it's uh, I hope it's an entertaining race. I I hope. I hope it's a good weekend for me. That would be great. It's always nice to do well on these big weekends, but um, you know, we'll we'll soon find out how the weekend's going to unfold with uh, with some practice here soon. Back in the back, Genevieve, and then uh, Bob, and then David. Go ahead. Danica, I'm Genevieve with Skirts and Scuffs. I'm right back here. Hi. I was just wondering, um, what's it what like? Are scuffs. What? what are scuffs? Skirts what? and scuffs. What are scuffs? Why isn't my microphone? Is my microphone working <laughs> accurately? What are scuffs? I'm just asking. Are they shoes? No. Boots? We're just um, <laughs> scuffs. As what are they? It's the scuffs mark. Tires. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> scuffs and stickers. Got it. <laughs> okay. I was wondering, what's it like to work for Kelly Earnhardt and her brother Dale compared to Tony Stewart on a regular basis? Uh, well, Kelly has a, a new baby, so we haven't seen her very much lately. I would imagine that given the fact that we're in Charlotte, well, is my microphone seriously cutting yeah. out? Is it Keep cutting working. out? Because I can't hear myself sometimes. Um, How are you doing back here? Okay. Uh, you know, obviously, we, I don't see her a ton, but she's a great person to work with and work for. Um, she's uh, very straightforward and to the point. 
And obviously, Dale, I, I, I don't feel like I have necessarily a, a sort of as much of a boss relationship with him, although, y yes, that's true. Uh, I, it's more of, a, more of a teammate feel for me um, from learning from him. And as far as that compares to Stuart Haas' side, I mean, everybody is different and unique, and that's what makes this world fun. And <laughs> that's what makes, you know, that's what makes it interesting. So um, I can only merely describe what it's like and um, describe the different personalities. And, uh, you know, Tony, is, Tony has that, you do feel a little bit more of that boss side to him because he's a, m a little more involved, I feel like, with the team and how and the operations and keeping things where he wants them. But, um, but a significant teammate feel of course too um, and that's because we are so um, it's uh, I'm, I've been very fortunate that everyone in NASCAR has been very kind and welcoming and helpful so um, they're, they're examples. Let's go Bob, David and then Claire. Go ahead Bob. Uh, Bob Parker, Sporting News. Uh, a couple of weeks ago you joked that you didn't know what, ki what type of snacks you might want in the car and I'm curious with the 600 miles can you talk about just in general, your diet, what you eat to keep fit, and if you have found out, figured out any snacks that you might <laughs> get during the race. I'm having a <laughs> good reminder. Um, I, uh, I mean, I eat healthy all the time. Um, it makes me feel better as well as makes, um, makes it easier to uh, do photo shoots and, you know, look the way I want to look. Um, so, uh, and then I work out a lot because I need to obviously stay fit and have endurance for the car. So. All those, for all those reasons, I, you know, I, I mean, I eat egg whites. Do you want to know this information? <laughs> egg whites and oatmeal and quinoa and salads and, you know, sandwiches with good bread and things like that. Um, and, uh, you know, try and mix it up at night. There was a point in time that I ate a heck of a lot of salmon and vegetables, and I still do that, too. That's I would say the track meal every night is... Uh, Salmon, brown rice, grilled, ve grilled um, peppers and grilled onions. And uh, pretty much that's dinner the first night every time because you got to eat the fish first. And then it's chicken the next night and so on. So, uh, I mean, I eat healthy all day long. Y yogurts, um, cottage cheese, blah, blah, blah. So um, anything healthy I eat. And um, inside of the car, I have a little, I have a drink mix that I put in my, in my Camelback that's a blend of carbohydrate and protein. Um, that's recommended by my uh, my trainer. And um, as far as snacks though go, though, have you ever asked any other drivers what they if what they have? I'm the first. Well, I only said it because I've heard other drivers have snacks. Is this true? Is this a lie? It's true. Well, do you think Tony would have snacks in his car? I don't <laughs> feel like Tony would have snacks in his car. You'd have a Whopper. <laughs> Big Mac. Well, Tony have a Whopper with uh, fries. Yeah, and some armor all. <laughs> uh, just keeping it keeping it clean. Um, I'll I'll have to ask around about that, but um, I think I need a pocket in the side of my car if I have snacks. Maybe I'll just put extra drink mix into my drink bottle. I managed okay in the 500 at Darlington, so hopefully that last hundred won't be too big of a deal. Although I think it's going to be a fair bit hotter, so um, I think. I think more than anything, in all seriousness, hydration is probably going to be the most important element. Let's go David, Claire, and then Viv. Go ahead, David, off to your right. Yeah, Danica. David Newton, ESPN.com. Danica, obviously, over the last year or so, a lot's been made about you being a female driver in a man's world here. Last week, uh, Daryl Wallace, you know, made his debut at Nationwide Race at Iowa. You were there. What were your impressions of that? And, and do you think NASCAR is moving closer to diversity where – one day you're not going to have people saying you're a female driver, he's a black driver. I, I, I met him. He was on the truck with me on the ride around, and um, he was a nice guy. Uh, he's from Charlotte, I found. Um, but anyway, uh, so we, did, we, we got a couple minutes to talk, but, and he did a great job in the race for sure. But um, I, I don't know. I, I think that over time it, it just happens. You know, I, I, I know that there's a diversity program in NASCAR to bring it to bring it to this, to the um, to the series more. But, uh, you know, like I always use an example as being a girl is that there are girls that come through in racing. And, you know, to find you know, if it takes one out of 100 guys to find a good one, I'm just using a random number uh, to find one. The, the one out of 100 girls takes a 
hell of a lot longer than a guy. So, you know, it just takes more time. And, you know, I'm sure that there are all kinds of different, um, you know, genders and ethnicities out there trying racing, and it just takes time. Um, but I think that in general, as a culture in this country, we are we are very open to new and different things, and uh, and it's just going to take time. Let's go, uh, Claire, and then Viv. Go ahead, Claire. Claire B. Lang, Sirius XM NASCAR Radio. I'm doing a special for Memorial Day, and I'm wondering if you get many opportunities to encounter the troops or the military folks, and your thoughts about Memorial Day. Uh, well, actually, we, um, I was just in Rock Hill, South Carolina last night, um, and uh, apparently not very far away, uh, <laughs> just down 77. And I, uh, I did an uh, appearance for Academy, um, which is a sporting store, uh, sports and outdoor store. And, and um, they've been a partner of mine for a few years. And they, they took care of a few military families, um, you know, husband, wife, the kids, everybody. Uh, I met them, got, got to talk to them all individually, signed some die-cast cars for them. And then Academy gave them all $100 gift cards to go shopping, everyone, including the kids. So uh, that was very cool. So we, we, um, we, we made yesterday special for the military families. And uh, what it reminds you is that there there are families, and that they, you know these 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 men and women that 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 serve our country are are leaving behind a lot, and um, they're not just young kids; they're 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 men with children. And uh, you know, it's it's Im I think it's a great thing that we have Memorial Day to um, put that put that in the front of our mind instead of letting it be a a sub thought to things. So um, it's a good good reason to celebrate and. Um, for those who aren't here, hopefully they come home soon. Viv? Viv Bernstein, New York Times, um, over here. Uh, I know you have a, a whole lot on your plate this week here, but is it only natural that some of your thoughts go to Indy and, and what's going on there? And there any pangs at all, <coughs> wishes that, that you could be there? Uh, whenever I'm busy, that's sort of what I'm focused on. And, uh, you know, last weekend when I had time to watch qualifying, I was thinking about Indy and I was thinking about, you know, what would be, ha how would I be doing if I was there? And I can imagine every thought that's going through all those drivers' heads. And so, you know, when someone comes off the track and says, I don't know, I don't think we can go any faster. That was, as, you know, that was pretty, it was a pretty tough run as it was. I mean, I can imagine what that's like. I know what that's like. And, you know, for those drivers that are on the spot and trying to qualify, I mean, that's, you know, I can imagine all those thoughts. So, um, and, uh, but I, I didn't feel like I wanted to be there. I just had a lot of memories of, of what was going on. So, um, I'm, I'm very pleased that I'm in NASCAR. I'm very happy. I'm having a lot of fun. And, um, and um, I'm looking forward to a different challenge this weekend. Let's go to uh, Lee Spencer over here. Raise your hand. Lee Spencer, Fox Sports. Were you surprised that Bump Day only had, you know, 33 cars to full fill? I mean, you know, we're sitting there flipping back and forth between the nationwide race and, and Bump Day, and it's like, it seems so anticlimactic. It, it, you know, it, even compared to last year, it just, it, it, it was really surprising. Yeah. Yeah, it was climatic last year for me <laughs> as I'm sitting at the front of the line when it starts raining. Um, but, uh, but, um, yeah, I think that's obviously a result and I'm not uh, there anymore to, to know exactly what's going on, but I know it's a, res it's a big result of, of there being a lack of engines and some of the teams changing over to, from, away from Lotus engines. So, um, and everybody wanting Chevy engines go Chevy. Um, so I think that's more of the source of it. I believe that there was quite a few more drivers that probably wanted to do it. Um, that they just didn't, they couldn't get, couldn't get the package put together. Couldn't get, couldn't get the engine to do it. So, um, but yeah, it is a bummer. Obviously, it's uh, you know the race has been around for what is it the 96th running is it this year? It's been around for a hundred years, and um, it's a shame whenever you see things take a hit. But uh, but I, I think it was more of a product of of, of the engine situation than anything. We've got time for two more questions. We'll go with Todd back here, and then we'll end with David. Todd Anderson, ESPN. What challenges, what type of challenges do you expect to face this weekend being here in Charlotte as opposed to Indianapolis, and do you think anything you learned from driving the Indianapolis 500 will prepare you for this weekend? Yeah, it's a whole different weekend. Uh, it's a whole different car. It's a whole different, it's a whole different everything. 
Um, so I don't think that the, my experiences from Indy necessarily will help me this weekend as a, a direct result. I think that my experience over the last 20 years of racing and, and, and seven professional years in IndyCar are what's going to help me, what's going to help me overall. And um, uh, I'm sure it's going to be, uh, I'm sure it's going to be um, a challenging weekend. Obviously, there's, uh, you know, putting the, putting, you know, the cup, cup, cup schedule together and doing this race is going to be a challenge. Obviously, in practice, I go from nationwide to cup car to nationwide to qualifying the cup car. And um, on Saturday, I go from two practices straight into the race of the nationwide. So, um, you know, that's going to be my challenge. And that's something I, I've only experienced. I mean, I experienced it at Darlington and a little bit at Daytona, but it was quite spread out at Daytona, and the cars felt so similar. So, um, so really, I've only done it one other time. So uh, that's going to be my challenge. And, you know, for me, it's just a matter of staying focused, staying positive, and staying hydrated. <laughs> I'm s sorry. I didn't mean to be loud. Final question, David, go ahead. Danica, this may be just our impressions or my impression from hearing you talk, but it, it sounds like you are, you're so comfortable in this environment and you're so content to be here that it's not strange to not be somewhere else this weekend. Does that, does that play into sort of your feelings about where you are this weekend at all? Yeah, that's, that's probably right. I mean, that's, that is right. The, the reason why I came to race NASCAR was to do all of these things. And um, I was ready to leave IndyCar. And I wanted to be here. And so, you know, when you're not missing something, longing for something, then you don't really think about it that much. It's like that girlfriend you didn't want to have anymore. You don't, you don't think about her anymore. So, um, <laughs> um, or ex-husband, I don't know. We all seem old enough to be of that sort of point. <laughs> I don't know. Um, but uh, it, you just don't. And I mean, Indy, I have lots of great, great, great memories from there. And probably the part of me that doesn't feel quite as longing for it is that there's still a chance that I could do it again. So it's not gone. So, um, and I'm excited about this weekend. Danica, thanks for coming in. And certainly we wish you a lot of luck this weekend at Charlotte. Thanks. I'll try and think better jokes next time. <laughs>